of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. To give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and a nymph. The words of the wise and their riddles. A fear of the Lord begins with knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instructions of your father, and do not forsake the law of your mother. For they will be graceful, ornaments on your head, and chains about around your neck. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and the hearer and doer of the word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. Thanking you for keeping your angels camped out around us as we slept last night. Thanking you, Lord, for giving us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Thank you for your doing this power to be able to fight off every evil, every evil spirit that will try to attack us. We ask God that you bless this house. Bless the Grove, Lord God, because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Yes, we ask God that you continue to cover us. Keep us away from all hurt, harm, and danger. Yes. And we intercede right now, Lord, for Sister Shannon's son, Lord, as he's in the hospital, Lord, but we know that you can heal him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Take away all aches, ailments, and pain out of his body. Yes, I pray right now, Lord, for each and every person in this place. Yes. That you touch them with the fruit of the spirit. Yes. The love. The joy. The yes. kindness. The gentleness. Faithfulness. Self-control. And patience. Yes. And let your Holy Spirit reign in this place. Because we know that you are not the author of confusion. Yes. And we ask God that you just bless us on today. Keep yes. us filled. You said if those who are called by your name. Yes. Will humble themselves. Yes and turn from their wicked ways then you will hear from heaven and heal our land and we need a healing on today God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and we thank you and praise you for the things that you have done and we thank you in advance for what you're going to do yes. in the mighty name of Jesus I pray to you and only you yes. amen Yeah. Hey. 
sing and talk because I, some people can't even get up and talk. And with that, I say thank you. Thank you. Our prayer list, Reverend Weston Cornerstone, Reverend Mosley, Sister Orr, Sister Miriam, Sister Brian, Sister Jerry's here this morning, Deacon and Jerry Gordon, Bishop Wallace is here this morning, Sister Katie, and Little Princeton in the hospital, and we just continue to pray that he'll be okay. And God will bless him and give Shannon the strength to deal with whatever's going on with him because only God knows what's going on. Yes, Lord. My point for today is shake and shine. We are all unique and special, resembling shells washed on the shore, created to glorify God with talents, gifts, and so much more. So battered by life's angry waves, God holds us in his hand. Yes, Molding our will to his own, like shells smooth by grains of sand. <clears throat> God knows our men in weakness, and he hears our faint cry. Even when, even when we deeply frustrated, he understands our worst and why. But God knows the past is best for us. He guides us through the storm. Be patient, child, he calls to us like a shell you soon take on. For it is by the restless water and the dark and stormy days that shares a shape and mold. Don't fear, God knows the way. Some days we struggle, some days our struggle will be ended and no more start. All will be gone. Then we lift our head with praise and thank our heavenly shores our rape, our shape, and shine. Our word for today is, bless the Lord my soul. Do not forget all the gifts of God. And that's Psalm 102. Did anybody have any announcements this morning? Give them to me early because I need to pass you up. Oh, and now it's time for our, our offering. And I will be reading from Malachi 3, 6 to 10. For I am the Lord God, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your father, you have gone away from my importance and have not kept me. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But he said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed thee. But he said, Wherein shall we rob thee? In tithes and offerings. He have cursed with the curse, for he have robbed thee. Even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, and there may be meat in thine house, and put me down here with you, said the Lord of hosts. I will give, I will open, will not open at the windows of heaven, and throw you out a blessing, and there should be not room enough to receive it. I'm going to let the Lord ask everyone to stand. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
see everyone in the house on this morning. Praise the Lord. Little brother in the house with me this morning. Amen. 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 It's Minister Orlando. I always usually let him tell his testimony, but I'm so proud to be able to say that it's like Silas. He tried to keep him in there for the rest of his life. He took the shackles off of him after 28 years. Amen. Amen. Ministry, prison ministry, licensed and preaching the gospel Amen. inside. Now he's preaching the gospel outside. Amen. 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 Thank God, thank God. He's a good God. I would like to first let me pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again. You said we can pray without ceasing. And I just pray once again, Lord, that you touch your house. Hallelujah. Continue to bless Cedar Grove. Yes. Bless each and every person that walks through the door. Hallelujah. Continue, Lord, to touch us with love. Yes, yes. Because we know, love, Lord, that love covers a multitude of sin. And I ask God that you just continue to hold on to us and bless us. Yes, yes. And let us build. Let us be the evangelists you call us to be. Yes, Lord. We know, Lord, you don't care nothing about no titles and positions. Yes, except yes. the evangelists. Hallelujah. So I ask God that you let each and every one of us. Yes, yes. Decrease so you can increase in each and every one of us. Yes, yes. I thank you for this house, a house of prayer, a house of holiness, a house of love, a house of deliverance. And I just ask God that your Holy Spirit dwell in this place today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to start with the scripture of Matthew. Chapter 28. I'm actually going to give a different type of message on today. If that's all right with you. But Matthew 28, I'm going to start at verse 5. Where it says, But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. And go run quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold. I told you. I wanted to stick with that part when it says, go run and go tell. And I say that because what are we running to go tell? Amen. We need to be running telling that Jesus is on the main line. Hallelujah. Tell how the mother Wilson and the sister Shannon was holding down the church. Go run and tell how the things that was decorated in the church. Go run and tell how the ushers are getting up every Sunday morning to usher yeah. to build this church. Hallelujah. Go run and go tell how many new members is coming into the group to see the growth. Amen. Go run and go tell just how good God is. Mm. Go run and tell the gospel instead of gossip. Mm. Go run and go tell that. Yes. It's a new season, fresh anointing that's coming our way. Yes. And I say that because what if Christmas didn't come? Hallelujah. It's not an original type of sermon that I 
gleaned from various people, various pastor friends of mine that I talked to, that I adapted the style and the points and the light that this pandemic that we're going through, the Advent season. We're under a week for the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Yes. I look forward each year to the Advent season and begin a series in presenting the Christmas message. And attempted to challenge to, uh, for us to think about just how God loves us so much that he will come into the world and become a part of our lives. I even want us to consider this morning the thought, what if Christmas doesn't come? I know what you're thinking because this should naturally prompt the question, what do you mean? Is it even possible for Christmas not to come? And I'm going to say yes, because it's possible. For even with all the activities, all the seasons, it's too often too many that Christmas is over for. Yes. We're no different than we were before. Hallelujah. When Christmas really comes, it changes us. Mm. It makes us different in our lives. Yes. So every year for millions of people, Christmas never really comes. <gasps> Why I'm saying that? Because yes, December 25th will be here. Yes. But a lot of kids don't have toys up under the tree. Hallelujah. A lot of people are homeless out in the street. Yes. But Christmas doesn't really have to come. If you can't have Christ, it's impossible. Yes, Lord. And I say that because my prayer is that Christmas. God's spirit will come upon us and change us. And Christmas will really happen if we really know that if God is in us and God is for us, who could be against us? Amen, Amen somebody? I say that because it got to become a point. Everyone in here in this church today is in the ministry. Amen, amen. So if everyone in here is in the ministry working for God, we got to work like God. Yes, yes. Um, I say that just going back to this pandemic that we're going through, many around the world needed that shot of joy. Yes. You had the message last week, well, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, so the world can't take it away. But it's the joy that we have to have from the Christians yes, yes. for us to go out and show joy to other people that are sick and sad and laying up in the hospital. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I say that because over, for this Christmas season, we have 1.8 million traveled by air, 40 million traveled by car. Yes. But during the season, we have to be encouraged to be more like Christians. Yes. And I say that because when God has given us, filled his love, with, when people feel they stop us with gifts, God has already filled us with love and joy and peace. But if we keep our love and joy and peace, we're able to send it and give it to others. Yes. The church should not be under confusion. Especially for this Christmas season. Yes, yes. See, the Christmas season has arrived. Mm. When I said, what if there was no Christmas? I got Christmas. Yes. You got Christmas. Yes. It's arrived in the church. This church has Christmas. Hallelujah. Just in the next few days, we'll begin to see how all the beautiful decorations are going on, how our windows are decorated, how the fellowship hall is decorated. Yes. We have joy in our lives. We are true Christians on this Christmas. Yes. Amen, somebody? I'm, I'm all in my notes, but I got so much going on in my head because I wanted to make sure that when we talk about Christmas, it's the Christ Mass. Yes. Bringing the masses to Christ. And the only way we can do that is being having love and joy in our hearts. And not talking about walking away from the church, but bringing people to the church. We can all fellowship together. We can all be on one accord. There is no jealousy. There is no envy. One thing worse than jealousy is envy. Yes. Yeah, all right. Hmm. We should all be on one accord, especially during the holiday time. Amen. Right. Amen. I remember they used to have a saying where one monkey don't stop no show. Oh, Let me stay on the scripture. <laughs> you know I'm a transparent, but I say that because we'll be Christians. Mm -hmm. We'll be Christians. It hurts when people are not acting Christ-like. Amen, somebody. It really does because it's like, well, what is going on in the church? What is going on with the Christians? We already know where the world is coming from. But let's consider this. 
through our scripture, through our text this morning is found in Galatians 4 and 19. And I realize this verse is not usually considered a Christmas text, but listen to what Paul says. My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of the childbirth until Christ is born in you. See, we often talk about being born again. Yes. When we become a Christian. Mm. But I suggest that Christians, when doing this Christmas time, also need to know the good times that remind us of our need for Jesus. Amen. How Jesus Amen. is born and given us, given us a life to be born again because we all have sin that falls short of the glory of God. But when we know we can get on our knees and say, Lord, I pray for this person that don't pray for me. Lord, I love this person who don't love for me Amen. because I know for the fact uh -huh. that God is going to forgive me for whatever stinking thing that I ever had. That is what Apostle Paul was praying for. That some, come somehow, in a wonderful way, Christ will be formed inside the hearts and the lives of each and every one of us. I say that because when we bow down before him, are we doing it fervently? Are we doing it with the Emmanuel, the, the God that's with you? You got to remember the Lord has been kind to us. The Lord woke us up this morning. When we say, how are we feeling today? We feeling great. Oh, we, are, we might have a headache. We might have a stomach ache. But God woke us up this morning. He kept us alive. He gave us an opportunity to come into his house. He gave us an opportunity to fellowship with one another. Yes. Working with, once again, out in the community. I just went to the, the inauguration thing with Karen Bass and before I can get home, we have phone calls where people don't make it home. And the first thing I did was say, Lord, thank you, Jesus, because I'm not used to being out at dark time anyway. But God, thank you for letting me make it home. Thank you for saving me and holding on to me. Yes, Lord. And I pray for the other, others, Lord, who's on their way. But see, we have got so adapted with technology. We learn how to program our computer, computers. We learn how to operate smartphones. We learn how to maneuver over smart TVs. We even figured out GPS systems in our vehicles. But overall, we have to remember that God is our direction. If we have peace on earth, as the prayer went forth this morning, all we have to do is humble ourselves. Yes. But I say that too, Mother, because the only way we can be humble yes, yes. is by going through humility. Yes. And once we go through humility, then we become humble. Yes. And once we become humble, then he gives us the honor. Amen. Amen. So you got to remember that blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Yes, Lord. Just stay focused on him. Because no weapon formed against you will prosper. Yes, Lord. Amen, somebody? No weapon formed against our church will prosper. Yes. Yes, Lord. You talk about the church and everybody say, well, I am the church. I talk to so many people. I am the church. I don't have to go to church. The church is in me. Amen. Yeah, but that's the universal church. Amen. We need to build a local assembly church. We need to build Cedar Grove right here. We need to go out and let them know that we got so much love in us that no matter if you say no to us, we know to shake the dust off our feet and flee and go to the next. Amen, amen. Because God is going to bring the increase. Yes. But I want to raise another question. How will Christmas come? Hmm. When you read the Christmas accounts of the Gospels in Matthew Luke, and Mary and Joseph when they're making their way to Nazareth, Nazareth, y'all already know this is not the Gospel, not even Mark, Luke, and John. But in this, in these texts, it's talking about the crowds of people, the crowds of people who was yelling, thanking Jesus, yes, yes. going to give gifts, and, and, and I say that because when I was went to a Christmas program and. And I heard how they were teaching the kids in the school about Christmas and the three wise men. Yes. And I had to let the little children know, look, here's in the Bible. Can you read the scripture for me? Amen. Amen. Where do it say three mm. wise men? Yes. It just say the wise men. Mm. They assume because of the three gifts, of course. 
But we have to realize if we write, read the Bible for ourselves and know that God is in us and the Holy Spirit is using us, we'll be able to know just how to love someone else by teaching them the gospel and letting them know exactly the infallible word of God. Amen. But it comes to a place where you got to go, it has to come back from to love. And, I, and I'm all over the place this morning, and I, and I say that because no weapon formed against Cedar Grove is going to prosper. We're going to have Christmas. We're going to have Christ in us. We're going to continue to be blessed and highly favored. Amen. We have to be. Yeah. But we all got to come on one accord. Amen. Amen. And I say that because just, just touch yourself right now. Just put your, put your hand on yourself. <laughs> Close your eyes for a minute. Mm. Lord, we come to you fervently yes. in prayer. Everything that you have brought us through, you have moved every mountain. Yes. You have parted every red sea. You have slain every giant. Mm. But Lord, we need more of you. We need more of your love. Yes, Lord. That agape love. And we know, Lord, that it's many people who do not like us. Yes. But it's okay because we follow you. So I'm asking God that you strengthen each and every one of us yes, from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Yes. Knowing once again we can do all things through you. You said we're more than a conqueror. We're the head and not the tail. And we are above and not beneath. Yes, Lord. But we need you, Lord. We need you like never before. Because we already know how the Sadducees are and the Pharisees were to you. But we want to love on one another. Yes, yes, Lord. And do the work that you have called us to do. Hallelujah. Because we know every season mm. is the reason for you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because if it wasn't no Christmas, there would be no Christmas carols. If it wasn't no Christmas, there wouldn't be no building. If it wasn't Christmas, there would be no people singing and singing in the choir in the sanctuary. It would be no worship. Yes, yes, Lord. So with the beginning of the sermon saying, what if Christmas didn't come? Yes. Christmas is already here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, somebody. Christmas is already in your hearts. We can have Christmas every day. Yes. We just have to have love in our hearts. Yes. But I'm asking each and every one of you, don't give up. Yes. Don't give up. You know how the song says it's a new season, new day, fresh anointing coming our way? We got to claim it. We got to claim it. We got to claim it. Nobody can build a church, a local assembly church by themselves, not even a pastor, not even a bishop. We need the ministers. We need the evangelists. We need the ministers and the elders. We need everybody in this church to say, you know what? I love my church. I love God. God loves me. And we're going to build. If no weapon for the business shall prosper, we got to keep that in our minds and in our hearts. And when people come up against you or say anything against you, just smile. Just smile. It'll make you feel so much better that you can say something that you was not supposed to say. Amen. Amen. Because see, some people are hurt. Yes, yes. They always say hurt people hurt people. Yes. But us as Christians who have God's love in us, when we see the hurt, we gotta pray for them. Yes. We have to let them know that look, God loves you. You guys see the stuff on the what's going on with the suicide, all that stuff going on with the beautiful family. Yes. All he needed was somebody to talk to. Hallelujah. And say, God loves you. Yes, yes. God loves you. I'm just going to close with this. And I say that because when people go out and run. Amen. Go run and tell this. Uh -huh. Go quickly and run and tell Jesus yes. has risen. Hallelujah. Go run and tell the gospel. Go run and tell how Cedar Grove is starting to grow. Yes. Go run and go tell that. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, once again I come to you asking you to fill our house. Hallelujah. 
asking you, Lord, to give us the strength and the courage because we know that you don't give us the spirit of fear. But just like we can clap our hands and stuff our feet for these sports that's going on, Lord, I need us to clap our hands and stuff yeah. our feet for you. Amen. Because you brought us too far and we know yeah. that you're not through with us yet. Hallelujah. And we thank you, God, that we don't look like what we've been through. And I ask God in the name of Jesus for this Christ mask that goes forth, the best thing we can do is give somebody a hug. Yes. Hallelujah. And I thank you and praise you. Thank you. Lord, in Jesus' you. name I pray. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Of praise. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to ask Minister Orlando to pray before Mother comes up. Pray us. Give us a prayer, brother. I'm feeling I, I know your heart. I know his heart. here today, Father. Hallelujah. When we could be doing other things, Lord, but you put it in our spirits and in our hearts, Lord. Yes. That we may attend here, Lord, in the fellowship and to honor you and glorify you and worship together. Yes, Lord. We thank you so much. Thank in the mighty you. name of Jesus, we pray Amen. 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 See, God can use anyone. Hallelujah. And I say that because When I was speaking to uh, Bishop Blake and Bishop Ely, they were saying how, you know, we can go out and preach the gospel and tell everybody about Jesus. Yes, yes. And his words to me were, which some of the people that you go to, mm -hmm. they're not going to hear me. can say the same exact words. Amen. But they're not going to hear me because I didn't come from that lifestyle. Amen. But this man here and us, we walk into a crowd full of gang members with, with stuff in their hand they should not have in their hand, and then put it down. Amen, amen. And then listen. But we all have a gift. And I'm asking that our gifts be manifested in this church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We need choir. We need a drummer. We need an organist. We need everybody amen. to come and build the church together. Amen, amen. But we got to start on the ground floor. Amen. And that's love. Yes. We have to love one another. Yes. I can't say it enough. Yes. If there's anything that you want to run and go tell, <laughs> go run and tell how Jesus loved you. Amen. Amen, amen. somebody. Go run and tell how you love somebody. Amen. Mother, come on, you know how to be quiet. God bless you. Know that I love you. God loves you. And we will have gifts for all the kids for our 1130 service. I just want us to stay in love with one another. Amen. We have to. Because everybody's watching us as men and women of God. Amen. 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 Amen.
and please give it from your heart because you get no blessing if it's not from your heart. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm going to ask everybody to stand and come around and follow the uh, Maybe we should go. Let's, let's come this way. See if everybody's on that side. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to the point now, Lord, just thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for just letting us step up on the ground this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the summer that went forth this morning. I thank you that you just give us safe travels, Father, going on, Lord, and just let us continue to keep the love in our heart and just continue to build and grow, Father God, yeah. in love. Yeah. And just continue, Lord, just to rain your blessings down on us. In Jesus' holy name, I pray.